Good morning, good afternoon, good evening all over the world. Dobson 777A here. So the other night I talked a little bit about uh, Argentinian wines and I talked about uh, fermentation. I'm probably going to be doing a few things under my cooking part, uh, the fermentation, how it's kind of a lost art, I think, for most people in their diet. Uh, they've, they've forgotten how um, it's the way things used to be preserved. And it also gave you beneficial uh, things to help in your digestion. But I was introduced uh, about uh, two or three months ago to Argentinian wines. And I, I think I told you before that I had, uh, uh, if not celiac, I had something similar to it. And later I learned that uh, there's a lot of people that have had problems with uh, Roundup exposure. And it has to do with the way they are spraying all of our grains now. And uh, apparently Monsanto uh, told everybody that if you spray the actual crops instead of around the base of the crops, you actually will release more of the grains. Unfortunately, they contaminated the grains when they did that. And a lot of people like myself, I really can't eat anything anymore. I can't drink beer. I can't uh, do anything that's related to um, any kind of gluten. So I've, uh, I learned this about 20 years ago and it took me a long time, you know, especially for the world to catch up to create gluten-free products and stuff. And um, I learned recently that you got to really even be careful with your wines. Uh, the wines themselves, uh, the grapes, um, depending on where they're grown, um, they will use all kinds of not only pesticides, but they'll use uh, like copper uh, things to kind of knock down mold and funguses, and then uh, they still were even using uh, Roundup. But in Argentina, apparently, um, most of these places, they're growing at such a high altitude, uh, they don't have all the normal pests that a lot of other places have. So I'm just trying to share with you some things that I've learned as I've tried to um, resolve my diet issue. And I'm going to tell you something right now. I talked about before, I still was down to, I don't have a gallbladder anymore. And it, um, so a lot of oils and things like that just do not work well for me. I mean, even eating like peanut butter, I was struggling to be able to digest it properly. And I found uh, that I was drinking some of this uh, Malbec wine a um, couple, to two or three times a week. And lo and behold, a lot of the remaining problems that I have are gone now. And my digestive tract is almost completely back to normal to some extent. I mean, I'm still going to be gluten-free, but you know, my, uh, my whole journey over the last uh, four years has been growing all my own chickens and rabbits and gardens. And I've been trying to be as organic as possible because my digestive tract has just been fouled up. So it's kind of an interesting thing when you kind of get to the end of the journey and you start realizing, geez, I'm actually almost completely well now. So I wanted to, and I'm not getting anything for this. I'm just showing you some things that I've been doing. Like uh, I used to go to Kroger and get some um, uh, Argentinian wines. And then I noticed that uh, um, Sam's Club had some. And they were really inexpensive at Sam's Club. But I recently joined a wine club, an exclusive wine club for what they call high altitude wines. And these have all kinds of interesting characteristics there's something called reversatrol or something. I'm probably mispronouncing it, but uh, these high altitude wines have the highest amount of that. And it's like a pseudo antioxidant type thing, but uh, I'll probably be letting you know the latest ones that came in, but I just got three different ones in. And this is a, a Malbec 2016 and it's Pepe Galente is this particular one. And I have not, um, I have not tried this yet. But I got uh, two of each one of these. Here's another one. This is uh, Mayoko uh, Vino Tinto Malbec 2019 Salta Argentina. By the way, I watched a fantastic video about uh, Argentina and where these, uh, the, the uh, club that I'm in, they actually send you a video of the particular wineries. And what's really neat is you can actually go stay at these wineries. They have it like a bed and breakfast type thing. But I mean, it's like a couple hours of four-wheel drive to get to some of these places. And this is Illogico Malbec 2018 uh, Sunol 
Um, so I'm going to be trying each one of these and I'll let you know how they stand up against my $6 bottles of wine that I get from Sam's Club. These are probably like $20 ones. And, uh, but I'll tell you another thing that happens and I only drink like a half a glass. I'm, I'm a lightweight with, uh, with, uh, alcohol, but I'm telling you what, I sleep like a baby when I drink these things. The other night I was toasting you guys. I drank that thing and I was out like a light. Unbelievable how it really relaxes you and helps you sleep. Maybe it's just when I'm talking to you guys, I get all relaxed. Who knows? That might be what it is. So I, I'm going to uh, be going down a path and I got to thinking, man, it would be so cool to travel to some of these places. And I'm, I'm kind of putting that on my bucket list to go to Argentina and see some of these places. I'm going to have a different uh, phase of my life. This, you know, I'm retired now. I need to be enjoying some of these things. So that's one of the things that I'm hoping to be doing. Um, it's just kind of a interesting thing. So anyways, uh, let's see who all's on here. FN based. Hello, DW, uh, AGAU man. That's his new name. He changed it because he's, he's gone and bought himself some gold. Greg Steinberg, pair building DW. Did I put you to sleep already? Uh, let's see. Oh, Cheap Laugh Kennedy. Maybe we can team up. Um, let's see. So, AGAU. Hey, first one to give you a thumbs up. I was watching NTD and the voting and regulating in one county in Georgia. 75% of late vote went Democrats. Yeah, did you happen to see the video? It was actually at... Uh, uh, one of the athletic centers that they were doing the voting and they told everybody there was a pipe leak and told everybody to go home. And they had a you know camera that recorded the whole thing where after they sent everybody home, the there were people there still scanning uh, ballots and they pulled some out from underneath the table. I mean, this is some really bad stuff that happened here in Georgia, but they caught them on video. So this is, and that's one of the largest counties. So they're going to get them. But anyways, uh, I don't know when we're going to get to travel, but Argentina, these places, the uh, video that I was looking at, this is a really neat uh, location. So, uh, unfortunately, they're like 10,000 feet above sea level, so I don't know how I will do it, you know, two miles up in the air altitude-wise. It takes a little while to get used to that. Oh, yeah, wine really does help, especially when you're not a big drinker. I'm not a big drinker. You know... Over the years, I never really kept alcohol in the house. And so we'd go out to dinner once in a blue moon and I'd order some wine or I'd order a margarita. Those are like the two things that I would drink. And it's just something that uh, not a drinker, never have been. But when you think about fermentation, I'm probably going to do a whole thing about fermentation. I mean, think about how few things are in our diet related to fermentation. Um, sauerkraut's like one of the only few things that come to mind and I've, I've never really eaten it. You know, every once in a while you might have it on a hot dog, uh, coleslaw. I don't know if that would be considered the same thing or not, but sauerkraut definitely is. Years ago, that was uh, kind of a mandatory thing. Yep. Hit the thumbs up. We got nine thumbs up. So we still got a few more days here before we start seeing what's going to happen. But I, I noticed that we're starting to get more and more uh, congressmen um, kind of saying that they're going to uh, kind of challenge this whole thing. So I don't know what's going to happen yet. It looks like it's building a little bit. I think this Argentina thing is kind of neat. I've also been watching a lot of things about the Falkland War. I don't know how many are old enough to remember that, but uh, some for some reason, because I was doing the research about Argentina for the wines, all of a sudden the Falkland War stuff came up and there was some really interesting things that happened during that time. So that's uh, got a whole new set of stuff. Palisade, Colorado, huh? Yeah, I don't know if I could drink. I'll have to tell you a story. So Laguna Beach, I think it was. Uh, for work, we had to travel from L.A. to San Diego one time. And uh, on the way back, um, 
the radio said there was a big old wreck on, uh, uh, is it the 405? I can't remember what the big highway is that runs north and south there. And so we pulled off and went to, I'm thinking it's Laguna Beach. I might be wrong. But anyways, it's a, um, it's a, you got to drive quite a ways off the road and you get over to the, uh, the beach area and it's um, like a whole bunch of folks that are art artist colony. That's the word I was looking for. Well, anyways, we found a, a little restaurant and they had a microbrewery and we said, Hey, go ahead and bring us, uh, you know, their sampler thing. And they had this, it reminded me of a cutting board and it had cutouts of little four ounce uh, beers that they had. And so I think there was maybe like 10, 10 beers on the thing. So, you know, we started drinking those things and they hadn't brought the menu yet. And I realized that, you know, we were on an empty stomach and after pounding a couple of those, it was going to the head. And I said, geez, guys, you better bring us some bread. You better bring us something because we were going to get schnockered, you know, wait, waiting for the food. So anyways, they finally did uh, bring us some food, but I, I got to thinking, it's like, you got to be careful on some of the stuff. And that was before I knew that I had gluten problems and everything else, but I'll never forget that trip. My buddy and I, we had such a good time. I don't know if any of you guys ever been to those microbreweries, but uh, I'd probably prefer a winery place, but man, I just, I just can't drink that much. I'm not a big drinker. After Matt is here, Fred Wozniak, uh, Patriot Man, what's happening? I kind of started talking about some Argentina wines. I'm not a wine expert, but I'm going to start learning by being part of this wine club. And they've, they're they giving all kinds of tutorials on the whole thing. And I've just kind of got stuck on the Argentina because they're, they're very, very, very uh, interesting from a, at high altitude. They just don't have a lot of uh, chemicals and stuff that they use. So apparently, uh, DW, the there is a way that Congress can not accept the uh, electoral college votes, and they can actually force a vote by state. Which, if I remember correctly, each state only gets one vote. Um, Patriot Man, I don't know about Cypress Silver. It sounds like a small company. I'd have to go look at that to see what it looks like. But uh, that's that's something I don't know off the top of my head. And uh, Silver itself, uh, Silver is not operating in a... I mean, I'll show you some charts on silver, but silver isn't following a particular path like uh, gold. Gold is a very predictable thing, but we all know all the metals kind of follow gold. Um, I've done a lot of work, uh, actually more on platinum, that I think platinum is going to be the surprise metal, kind of like uh, palladium was this year. I think platinum is going to uh, do a moonshot on us and far exceed what silver is doing. But silver is going to follow gold. It's going to overshoot periodically, and uh, it's going to be kind of interesting. But the the reason why, you have to remember, the Senate uh, has more Republicans than it does Democrats, and that's why Trump would end up winning. Silver always will outperform gold, but only for very short periods of time, and then it, it collapses. So you just got to be careful with silver. You got to know how to play it. It's a, it's a very difficult trade. So that's why I just do a little bit. I've got uh, more stuff coming. Um, I'm doing the uh, rebalancing right now for the members. And uh, I actually did a members video already that kind of told them my initial analysis. And I'll just let you know for the non-members, since this is for everybody, I kind of made a decision. It looks like that uh, in the improved portfolio, we're not going to carry the ETFs this time. We're going to go all stocks. We already have the ETF portfolio that people can follow, but the ETFs kind of drug down the portfolio a little bit. 
um, we can actually do much better with the stocks. We did very well with the stocks this past year. And so I think it's time to just uh, get rid of the crutches or pare down the ETFs quite a bit because we were holding quite a bit of the ETFs. So I think that's uh, what I'm considering doing this next year. So that was my preliminary. You know, I always try to start uh, when I do my analysis at work, you start at like a thousand foot level, you don't get in too close and then you start diving in a little bit and ever uh, a little bit at a time. After Matt, I don't hold uh, ETFs at all in my portfolio. I did it for the folks that are kind of stuck in, uh, what do you want to call it? The like 401ks, they don't actually have options to buy stocks in many cases, unless you have like your own rollover IRA or something like that. So I figure we kind of have the ETF portfolio that they could follow and it, and it did really well, but uh, the stocks have just done phenomenally well. Yeah, I haven't looked at Bitcoin in a while. Bitcoin, as you know, roars up like crazy, kind of like silver does, and then it collapses. Remember, it was at 21,000 and went all the way down. I forget how far it went down. Did it go down to 7,000 and it back up to 14? So, uh, Nickel Creek Platinum Company. No, um, I kind of stuck with uh, Sabine Stillwater, and I've been with them for uh, over a year now. And Sabine Stillwater actually is a pretty diversified company. So, um, and they're huge. So I really like that. Uh, VNNHF is a gold stock and that has been doing fantastic. Um, I think we already, we went over a double. We're heading towards a triple already. Um, CXBMF is another one that's done unbelievably well. So these are, these are interesting things that you're bringing up. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now, I have a number of newsletters that I have paid for and I've, I get them every year. And I will tell you that um, those particular newsletters, they filter through all of the mining stocks. And they have organized it in such a way like uh, John Duty's portfolio, for instance, is over 50 uh, gold stocks that he analyzes. And, uh, and these are filtered out of whatever it is, 1,500 gold stocks. And he only invests in 10 of them. So then I look at the other 40 that he didn't invest in, and I find some gems in there that I'm like, these are still really good ones. And those are the ones that I bring into our improved portfolio and I call it like front loading some of these because occasionally we may get lucky and some of these things may end up uh, showing up or bought up by his, uh, I tell you, I don't even know how many subscribers there are through Stansbury now that are investing that way. But let's say there's 10,000 people that all of a sudden uh, John's uh, portfolio says buy this stock and all of a sudden 10,000 people go and buy it. If you're in it already, you are going to double your uh, stock overnight. That's the way it works. So that is uh, doing very well right now, the approach that we're doing. And uh, I'm going to probably keep doing that same thing. I have a couple other newsletters that are gold and silver mining stock uh, newsletters. And I kind of wade through those things the same way. So I've got quite a bit of research to do. Yeah, VNNHF is an, an amazing stock. And uh, I, I haven't looked at the, uh, what do you want to call it, the, the projections for VNHF, but they were originally listed was going to be like $3. It could have increased already because a lot of these companies are continually finding more and more reserves. Um, as they mine, they, they keep doing exploration and they find more reserves and the price uh, future price uh, target increases because of that. So that is something that uh, it may have increased already. But I mean, a lot of us bought VNNHF like 32 cents. And what is it now? I think it's like a dollar, isn't it? I haven't looked at it in a while.
Do, 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 do. Anybody know off the top of their head? No, oh, being in HF is uh, 7535. It's dropped down a little bit. It was uh, significantly better than that, but uh, that's still uh, doubled, more than doubled. So that's doing great. That's the only one I remember off the top of my head what I paid for it. We've been following that a long time. I'm going to say it was like July or August last year, I think, you know, we added it to the portfolio. Yeah, everybody has this uh, short-term view of silver, and they will they'll always say, oh, my God, look how well silver did in the last year. But, you know, most people have been holding it since 2016, crying the blues, because, you know, they were sitting on $50 silver, and a lot of people are still underwater. So they're, uh, they're not pleased with silver, and they have short memories. So Jewelry Affairs, Happy New Year. On what plan do we have to access the stock portfolio, please? Um, primarily the platinum or gold give you the majority of the um, capabilities of being able to see you know, everything that you need to see. Uh, silver has very limited capabilities, but it's only like $2 a month. Uh, kind of consider, uh, I give a lot of free content though. You have to admit, I've given you a lot of free content, and I still will, but um, the actual members will see much more detailed reports, and they'll also get reports in advance, and they also get reports with uh, little to no um, advertising. So I've been sticking those out there regularly. I'm kind of getting back in the groove again. You probably have noticed I've been doing more and more videos, and of course, there's a lot of activity right now. So something's about ready to break. And this is the active season. Last year, gold and silver went, I think it was all the way through February, just went crazy, or at least gold did. Platinum is going to be the surprise this year, I believe. I believe we're going to see platinum probably exceed gold. We'll see. Man, check out Jewelry Affairs. That's really cool. How'd you do that? Welcome to platinum. Got colors and everything in there. Yeah, so uh, you got to remember, uh, platinum was uh, identified as an opportunity back in uh, August of 2018. And I did all kinds of uh, videos about platinum in 2019. And I was just thinking the other day that I'm going to pull those all together into one presentation again and, and kind of remind you all the things that I've been saying about platinum. And SBSW was the only mining stock that we actually had purchased because again, remember I'm a very conservative investor and SBSW was one of these things that uh, they are a billion dollar company now. Fantastic. PPLT is an ETF. If you're stuck in a um, IRA or whatever, that's a representation of the physical, but it's not a minor. So if you want to uh, play, you know, like you would GLD or, SLV, you know, it's a similar thing uh, used in the ETF. Um, I tend to recommend people get physical wherever possible. But uh, anyways, hey, Jewelry Affairs, does this mean that you actually uh, became a platinum member? I'm trying to figure out how you did that. That's really neat. Yeah, PPLT is the uh, ETF. It's not minor. That's uh, just a physical ETF. Yeah, well, PPLT is a only an ETF. It's a for the physicals. Um, SBSW is an actual stock. I think you'd like uh, SBSW. I'm telling you, those guys, uh, when I do the presentations again, where I kind of pull it all together, um, I'll save you the time hunting for those presentations. I'll make... Uh, little hyperlinks, either in the description or within the video itself. I'll just do a quick summary.
I think PPLT is still undiscovered. I mean, we got surprised with palladium this year. Palladium was actually the play this year. Everybody was caught off guard with that. We all thought platinum was going to be it, but it turned out palladium ended up being the play. So, Okay, so uh, jewelry affairs. Um, I will, in the description of this, um, what do you want to call it? This um, live stream. I'll put a link to the, um, the videos that are out there for the members. And um, that will show you all of the members' videos. I'm going to try to put it in the description for all of them if I remember. And I, um, I might even put it in uh, the comments so people know. You'll always get a notification from any video that I post. It'll show up in your feed as a new member's video. And by the way, I've never seen these things, so I'm not sure exactly how it works. Some people tell me they get them. Sometimes they don't. But I think it's because a lot of the folks were silver members, and I do the more detailed analyses for the gold and platinum members. I will tell you this. I've read this multiple times. If you own, this is an insane amount. If you owned 30 ounces of gold, you are like a one percenter of gold investors. If you were to get like 30 ounces of platinum, you would probably be like a 0.02% of platinum investors. And I'm telling you, I think uh, platinum is going to be the big surprise still. Uh, but I, the way I've always suggested, because I consider it a speculation, you know, I build my foundation with gold, 70% gold, then I build 20% silver and then 10% platinum. Um, that way, Remember, I don't like my portfolio to do this, right? I want my portfolio to do this. I want it to grow just like this. And so I show you my charts over and over again. The gold has a much more predictable uh, upward trend where silver bangs the rails. So if you take a little bit of silver and mostly gold, it will um, kind of like smooth it out, right? We used to call that smoothing when we'd uh, do things on uh, oscilloscopes and things like that. Um, so I want you to think about investing along those same lines because you want to be able to sleep at night. Yeah, actually, uh, SBSW, am I right when I remembered it? It was up like 70% year to date or something, some incredible amount. It really just roared back. And I think that's because platinum came roaring back as well as gold. Uh, SBSW holds gold. It's a gold miner because that's what Sylvain still, that's what Stillwater mining was in, in, uh, the United States. So, uh, Sabane bought Stillwater and then, uh, Sabane was a, a PGM, uh, miner. So they had gold, platinum, rhodium, palladium, all that kind of stuff. Um, so they've now put that together. And I thought, I could be wrong, but I think they bought a copper mine now, too. So they're getting very diversified. Yeah, what happens, uh, Aftomat, um, one of the videos I did, I showed that uh, platinum and palladium swap places, and it has to do with the way the catalytic converters uh, work. Um, they were, you know, platinum would get overpriced, and so they'd switch to palladium. They just basically retool, and so... Palladium would then get overpriced and they'd retool to platinum. So that's kind of the way it's done. And it's probably like every 10 to 15 years. Yeah, your EKG matched the charts. Yeah, no kidding. It's a scary. So you need to you need to be able to, to kind of calm everything down. You want to sleep. I sleep like a baby, folks. And it's just because I learned a long time ago, don't swing for the fences. Um, I can get very respectable returns. And I'm going to tell you right now, we got nearly 30% return just with those five ETFs that I did, you know, the, the gold and silver ETFs. And it's because of the allocation that I applied. 
Uh, I know some folks that they went and put all their money in First Majestic, and First Majestic was a dog this year. You can't do that, folks. So when you looked at uh, the improved portfolio, we eked out nearly a 40% return, and uh, we were still holding a lot of the ETFs, which had much lower return, but we spiced it up with some of those, uh, a lot more royalties and uh, the micro miners and stuff. So um, I've, I learned a long time ago how to build a robust portfolio. My portfolio is up over 50%, but um, mine is a live portfolio. And I had uh, started it in, uh, was it August last year? I think when I switched over to duties portfolio, and then I spiced it up with some of the things that I found through my research. And I've actually uh, been outperforming John's portfolio because again, spicing things up. I, I keep trying to tell you, you got to think about like the micros. It's uh, it's a little bit like throwing some, uh, um, say some spice in your chili sauce, some jalapenos or something. You, know, you only need a little bit to spice it up. You don't need a whole lot. Um, you don't want to ruin the batch. And so that's kind of the way it is. So we'll see what happens. It was just funny. Uh, First Majestic was a... They won all kinds of awards for 2019 for their performance. And then 2020, they were the dog of the year. So I'm, I doubt they got an award. But, I mean, it's a great company. I met the guy. I forget what his name is. Newmeyer at uh, the, the duty conference last year. We actually had some uh, wine together and talked at length. And uh, he was actually making transactions while we were sitting there talking, buying and selling silver. So or selling silver since he's a miner. So you don't put all your eggs in one basket, folks. That's the way it works. Yeah, SIL is the large silver miners, uh, but again, it's probably 20 plus miners. So you're not, again, putting all your eggs in one basket. If you are a, a newbie investor, you probably should be following my ETF portfolio because that's a pretty safe portfolio. Yep, they say sell uh, they sell silver directly. I've seen their uh, their rounds that they sell. No, Sil J is not killing it. Um, I looked at the charts for that year to date. It wasn't so good. Let me let me see if I have it where I can bring it up real quick. Do, 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 do. I think while I'm researching, it's still showing the camera here, so we should be okay. Of course, my hard drive fell asleep, so it's got to wake up. Let me switch back to this while we're doing it. I'll tell you what Sil J has done year to date. It, 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 uh, I don't think it's done that well. I could be wrong. Maybe I'm thinking of just uh, First Majestic. I took screenshots of it while I was doing my analysis. I should have dated this. Well, Seal J is up 31% uh, for the year. Sil was up 37.5%. So large silver miners are outperforming the uh, the large silver miners. But I mean, we've got, I think my um, doggone um, royalty companies have done better than that. So royalty companies, if you can't beat the royalty companies, it's just not, uh, it's not telling you much right now. The miners are only keeping up with the metals right now for this year. So they haven't broke out. The miners are, I'm thinking they're like a cold spring that's about to blow, but we will just have to see. Um, all right. So Minchin is asking me, what's my favorite royalty company? So I'm going off the top of my head, but, uh, Franco Nevada has been a year after year after year, but they are a, uh, mega size corporation now, and they are just killing it for just a very simple 20% return just, or, or more. I don't remember off the top of my head what they've done year to date. 
Um, but I have some micros that I added this year that kicked butt, absolutely kicked butt. So that was in the improved portfolio. We added those in February and they have just blown away everything else. But we only put a little bit in that. We put a lot more in the other royalty companies. But I think I have five different royalty companies that we're investing in. I think a lot of people are saying to hold off doing anything until we see what's going to happen with this uh, presidential race and everything. Uh, the 20th is the actual swearing in. So that's why I think he's talking about, uh, you know, waiting till buying the 19th or the 20th. So you see what's going to happen. I think there's some big stuff they keep talking about in the six. We're supposed to have like a million people show up in Washington. Um, on the 6th. We got 39 people, got nothing better to do than watch my live stream. Isn't that great? But we only got 21 thumbs up. I don't worry about who's in office because I want you to think about they're painted in a corner. They do not have anywhere to go. All they can do is keep uh, printing, print, print, print. And now they're sending you uh, money um, to get you hooked on it. This is, this is not a good thing what they're doing because, and a lot of people aren't thinking about it. They think, you think you're getting free money, but you forget the, the currency that they're printing is diluting the currency that you may already have. So unless uh, unless you're able to offset that some way with precious metals or something else, um, you will probably be hurt quite a bit. All the salaries, everything are being depressed by this. Um, when they when they printed all those dollars, and I mean it's all electronic. They just added several more trillion into the thing and just sent it out to everyone. Uh, your paycheck did not go up at work to compensate for the fact that everything else has to go up to compensate for the fact that they've devalued our dollars. So this is, this is a death spiral that we're starting here. And somebody had said that this is just like the first little ripples before the tsunami of money um, or currency starts being created. So you're, you're just going to see this getting worse and worse and worse. Uh, price inflation is going to be incredible. I don't know, Corolla, think about it. My God, this has been going on for a long time. We all thought the game was over in 2007, 2008, but somehow they went in and printed their way out of it. So how long they, can they go? I don't know. I guess, I guess we're all a bunch of dumb, crazy people just accepting the fact that they're doing this and not doing anything about it. Um, I, I just think this is insane what's going on. I have tried to mitigate everything I can, and I've tried to show you how to do the same thing. You need to be putting away food. You need to be learning how to grow your own food. You got to mitigate the crap out of this because I'm going to tell you right now, you can go buy a heck of a lot of feed and uh, grow your own animals way cheaper than you're going to be able to buy it because it's your own labor that you're saving. Same thing with all your garden. I mean, seeds are really inexpensive. You know, once you get your NRE, which is the non-recurring expenses of getting your raised beds and everything in place, uh, it's a very low recurring cost. And it's going to become a lower cost over time because of uh, the way prices are going to explode. And these are skills that a lot of people do not know how to do. I had to learn how to do all this myself. And I've shared with you step by step by step. So I want you to, you know, make sure you understand all these other clowns like George Gammon and stuff. They're not showing you how to mitigate these effects. They're just telling you to go buy gold and silver. But I think we learned this year, gold and silver ain't going to do any good when the stores are empty. So they're missing the huge part of this. You've got to be able to grow your own food. You have to be able to store it. You have to have water. You have to have energy. All this stuff you have to have.
It's all about trust, mainstream media. At some point, everybody's going to go, what the heck have we done? And as soon as trust is lost, then they can't do it anymore. That's when the whole thing collapses. Oh, let me take a drink. <clears throat> so I worked as a defense contractor and I learned that uh, single point failures is a mission killer. So that's one of the reasons why I've attacked this particular problem, you know, a dozen different ways. I'm not going to be, um, allow myself to have like my water cut off and causing me troubles. I'm not going to have my power cut off and causing me troubles. I'm not going to have the food shut down and causing me troubles. I've done everything I can. I mean, if you're going through winter time and we have, I mean, they keep telling you dark winter, you know, that could mean that the grid's going to be down for an ungodly amount of time. If you live up in the Northeast and you don't have power, how are you going to heat yourself unless you got wood stoves? And they've outlawed a lot of these things. So you want to make sure you live in a as free a place as you can. So that's why, you know, I've got wood stoves. A lot of times I can just run my downstairs wood stove, and that's more than adequate for heating the house if it's fairly mild outside. But when it gets cold, I need both of these things running, and I'm comfortable. And I can take care of a lot of my family members at this location. So I've talked about being Joseph in the Bible, a coat of many colors, where we may have to protect you know, a lot of our family members uh, because they're unable to do the same thing. So I want you to think about how you're going to uh, accomplish this when it's all taken away from you. Yeah, the problem is when nobody else can get food and water, they're not going to necessarily be trading their stuff. So that's going to be the real problem is like, I don't know if I'm going to want to be trading any of my food for gold and silver unless I could see the light at the end of the tunnel. If there's no light at the end of the tunnel, you're going to try to be protecting what you have as much as you can because you don't know when everything's going to come back, you know, together. That's the real problem with all this. If we had an actual CME, you know, coronal, coronal mass ejection, um, and it hit like the side of the earth where the U.S. is, it could be a decade before you get power back. So everybody's going to be learning how to do all this. It's going to be mass anarchy. It'll actually be anarchy, folks. But, you know, I've set up where I got water coming off my roof systems and I can water my gardens. I've got a cistern in the basement with a whole bunch of water. And um, I've got my solar. Yeah, I've got solar. I've got batteries. I don't have enough batteries. I need to get more. But I got started with what I could. And I need to get my well this year. That's what I'm hoping I'll be able to get a well. Yeah, so there's going to be challenges uh, with a lot of family members because the majority of them are going to be incompetent in survival modes. So they're not going to be able to just sit on their butts. We're not going to have TVs and video games and all that kind of stuff. And so this is going to be quite challenging as to who you're going to bring within your household. That is the real concern is, uh, you know, will you, will you be able to keep from having anarchy in your own house? Um the rain cistern thing, I, right now I've got a 2,500 gallon tank in my basement and I fill that up and I drain it and refill it, you know, every two years. So that's, that's not for, um, that's not, that's only for drinking and for food. I've got rain catchment outside that I could use for uh, flushing toilets and stuff. And that's, uh, but the 2,500 gallon tank is for cooking and everything and drinking. And I hopefully... We'll have plenty of wine. <laughs> Medicinal purposes, right? 
Basel three starts to kick in March, 2021 and finishes in January, 2022. That should be interesting. You lived in the mountains and was self-sufficient until your divorce as a GAU man. Yeah, it's amazing. If, if you were building a house from scratch, especially if you were in more of a desert region, I've seen these guys where they would have an amazing amount of water that they would have uh, stored in, you know, basically underneath their property. And it would be constantly circulated. They'd have, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen these earth houses. I've seen some of these things. It's absolutely amazing what they do. Everything's kind of grown under glass and stuff. It's quite interesting. I would love to make a, a zero energy house. I forget what they call it, net zero house or something to where you, you really uh, don't use any electricity from the utility company, mostly because the way the house is built, very energy efficient to begin with. So anyways, we've gone 46 minutes and it seems like an incredibly short amount of time. I haven't drinking any wine today, but man, I feel like it's kicking in. Probably just thinking about talking about wine makes me tired. Oh, hey, by the way, how many of y'all got your stimulus checks? They were supposed to be kicking those things out already. Uh, last year, I had uh, lots of troubles with mine. I don't think I got mine till September or something. But you ought to be uh, watching your bank account because they're rolling out. I know some folks that have gotten theirs already. So they're, uh, they've worked out a lot of the kinks. Cool. Mr. Action got his, DW not his. I heard that they, well, okay, look, I didn't research this, but I heard they were trying to send it to all of the folks that were working first and then the retired folks second and then yada, yada, yada. I don't know what their priority is, but uh, that was kind of what I heard. Any of you all having trouble uh, paying your rents? Um, there's a lot of counties that have uh, rent payment capabilities that can pay several months too. So you might want to look into that. Cool. A lot of people got theirs already. That's great. So they're, they've got this system, uh, kind of all the bugs worked out, it looks like. Yeah, that's on my goal over the next couple of years. I want to get my house paid off too. That's uh, you're never paid off as long as you got real estate taxes, but good grief. This is water, by the way. I fill this up about three times a day, <clears throat> filtered water. I actually got that from my old work. That was one of the engineering day gifts that they gave us. It was great. All right. Well, I think I'm going to wrap it up. This is uh, 48 minutes. I'm glad people are getting their stimulus checks. I hope you either go buy like some dried foods like rice and uh, beans and or precious metals or something. Um, don't, uh, please don't think that, uh, Food's always going to be in the grocery store. Gasoline's going to be in the gas stations. Uh, try to think about how you can uh, mitigate those kinds of things and hunker down. I mean, they're trying to teach you to stay home already now. Then they're going to teach you a big lesson. Think about they're tightening the screws every year now. They're tightening it down on us. They're limiting, you know, where we can go, what we can do, all that kind of stuff. And you need to be able to try to be self-sufficient. If you can't be self-sufficient living in an HOA, you got to get the heck out of there. You got to get somewhere else. All right. I hope everybody's uh, treating you well. I hope you're doing well. Do the best you can. God bless.